Hello, my radio babies. I am Mother Love, and you are listening to the Mother Love Show. Today, we are so pleased to have on the program, he, this guy is so hot and smoking, he is the prince of comedy. So when he get, becomes the king of comedy, remember he was here with Mother Love on the Mother Love Show, the prince of comedy, all the way from Baltimore, making his home out here in Los Angeles, Mr. Kwame Siegel. How are you? Welcome to the I'm program. Blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be with you. Thank it's you. It's wonderful. Thank you. Absolutely. So now, you're a comedian. First, let's talk about this name. Oh, my God. Kwame Siegel. Yeah. Is that like African Jewish? I mean, what's the origin? Did you make that one up? You already got it. Uh, um, I'm from Baltimore. I was born in Baltimore, but my mother's from Ghana, West mm -hmm. Coast of Africa, and exchange uh, student parents were Jews. See, I just, yeah. see, so you got you, yeah. actually, you are actually a Jewish person. Part somewhat, Jewish. Somewhat, I guess. I think we all are. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, because yeah. if you're a Christian, you know, Jesus was Jewish. I know you all don't want to think that, but I'm just like, this is just FYI. Just FYI. So now, did, when did you know that you were funny? Um, you know, I, I didn't like know I was funny. Like, um, uh, I just love to laugh. Mm -hmm. And I just had a funny bone to laugh. Like, I used to get put out of class just laughing my head off, you know, just laughing at everybody else and just clowning. So that's that's Now, when that's you were growing I'm, up, yeah. it, now, do you have brothers and sisters? Oh, uh, yeah, little brother, yes. Okay, so you're the oldest. Yeah. So you're there to set the example. Yes. And then you're the goofy one. Yeah. So you're setting a bad example or the <laughs> fun example. Exactly. exactly. I, I say, I, I'm with that. I know. I'm from one of six, and I have no status in my family. Oh, wow. So you're, at, you're the oldest, so yes. you have some status. So now when you're growing up, did you get in a lot of trouble? Oh, of course. Of course. And it's just, uh, you know, just growing up in Baltimore, you're going to find trouble. It's boring out there. So it's like... No, you just got one of the kind of faces that trouble seems to find you. Oh, you think you so? You could be sitting there minding your own bit because you got a smile on your face that says, I know, I want to... <laughs> just look at, look at all these pretty white teeth. Oh, I am up it. to something. Yeah. And you're going to have to come over here and find out what it is. Exactly. It's just, it's just you know... Um, just play sports and you know, uh, just have good times and just live in life. And then, you know, I think I mean living like sweetie. I yeah. read your bio. You left at seventeen. <laughs> you had no life at seventeen, and you and you decided to get up and leave Baltimore. But before we get to that fact that you left Baltimore at seventeen, yeah, yeah. you you had to know that you were funny someplace to get up and go and say. I'm gonna go make a living at this. Well, in school when we had talent shows, you know, ah. everybody, everybody always says talent shows, but I used to host the talent shows. Okay. Like, I, well, I didn't go up there and I said, oh, I'm gonna do Eddie Murphy, Chris Rock. Nah, I didn't do that. Like, I hosted it, and you know, it's all rappers, mm -hmm. and I brought them on stage and off of stage, and I mean, everybody just loved what I had to say, and it was just so natural and fun, and everybody was like, oh man, you used to call me like that, and it just gassed me up after that. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't really have a, a stage routine at the time, but you just clowning up there. And that's what they're... See, yeah. for me, I, I believe two things. I believe that really great comedians, are they have it natural, and it comes from great pain. And mm -hmm. because you left at 17, where was your great pain? How deep did you have to go to get to that guttural, uh, that guttural sense of humor to bring out and say, I'm going to put this out on stage? Well, uh, I wish I could say it was great pain, but, you know, when you live in, in it, it's not that crazy. Um, but by the time I was a senior in high school, like I had six players from my football team that was shot to death. And that was just my football team. Oh my God. Yeah, that wasn't like the whole school. And those were just the ones that were shot to fatality. You know what I'm saying? So okay, was, but six people that you know, that yeah, you played yeah. with, that you worked with. Yeah. And if you cared for these young men, this seems to be six pieces of you that are being chipped away at. Well, it, it just, Did you feel like that at all? It it does because because it just it just lets you know that you got to go for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it just motivated me to be like the best human being I could be, mm -hmm. Christian, everything. Like you know, just be the best person I could be. So you have to just grow up fast because you might not be around too long. No, we got to take a break. But when yeah. we come back from this break, and if you want to hear more of this, you want to see the you want to see some more of this because we're gonna take a break. We're gonna have some fun stuff to do, and you can go to our website. You can go to my YouTube channel on YouTube, the Mother Love Show, and get some more information about our my conversation with Kwame Siegel. We're gonna take a break, and we'll be back after this. 